we, we, we think it's important to talk about the languages that are being used uh, <coughs> in, in, in Leicester. But we also want to hear from people uh, what they think is being important in terms of their linguistic cultural background. Um, so this event is a conversation. We starting with the speakers we've invited today, but the conversation with you in terms of listening to your experiences, maybe uh, uh, listening to your questions, and uh, hopefully that will uh, help us plan the next events that we're hoping to um, to run multilingualism in Leicester. I've already handed out a questionnaire, a handout as a teacher. Um, and uh, if you can spare a minute at the end, uh, or before you go, if you need to leave earlier, please uh, uh, feel free to go if you have other responsibilities. Um, so if you can fill it in before uh, you go, that will give us an idea of the topics that maybe you have found extremely interesting and you would like more opportunities to talk about them. Or if we haven't discussed something and you think it will be important to raise in a future event, please also. Um, uh, write them down and we'll try and uh, arrange more conversations on multilingualism in Leicester. Um, I'll let uh, Ambrose take a few things and say a few things now. Okay, so uh, my name is Ambrose. I one, one of the organizers of uh, the Leicester Human Rights Art and Film Festival. The festival has been running since uh, 2014. This is its uh, fifth consecutive year. And how the festival happens is, you know, we, we create space for, for compositions. Uh, last year we had one that looked at uh, diversity, diversity in the city. And uh, the discussion today that is looking at multilingualism builds on a conversation from last year. Because one of the things that we do not think about when we say Leicester is diverse, Leicester is multicultural, we do not think about the languages. And uh, we're also in an environment where there's an assumption that uh, Leicester and other towns and cities in the UK are monolingual. There are very few of them that are monolingual. And even if you look at English itself as a language, you find that it is actually uh, a hybrid. It's made up of many, many languages that words from many languages. So you are feel you can support the festival, you can support it in any way that you can, that will be appreciated. Uh, I will not take up any more of your time. I will yes, Yep. So, um, we, um, we're hoping to start with the, as I said, we'll listen to each of our, uh, of our speakers. Um, and then after each uh, presentation, uh, we can have a conversation. I'm from Dice. Uh, myself and Sajida at the back there who's taking pictures, she's from DICE too. Uh, DICE is uh, an organisation in the university that has responsibility to, for reaching outside the university to different uh, local communities. Uh, and this is like a guinea pig event here. This is a tryout for an event on, uh, on, on this topic that we hope is going to be much bigger and, and much more public in the sense that it will involve people from, uh, uh, many more people from outside the university uh, next year. Uh, so, uh, we've got these guys here, uh, not chosen by me, chosen by uh, Criso there. Uh, um, do you want to, uh, should we just let them speak? Yeah, I think so. Because uh, yeah. our, our themes, I guess, here are, are kind of language identity and belonging. That's, mm -hmm. that, those are our core themes for, for this discussion, the importance of language. Uh, in relation to those, uh, to those two other th other themes. So, Martin, why don't you begin talking about uh, about why you think it's important to have an event? Okay. Like 